Hi, my name is Dr. Shruti Sharma and today we are diving into a big topic that many companies are trying to figure out. Co3 emissions. You've heard about carbon footprints, right? But what if I told you that up to 90% of a company's emission come from sources they don't even own or control? Shocking, right? That's where Scope 3 comes in. Tracking emissions up and down your value chain, from the products you buy to how customers use and dispose them. And guess what? Most companies are just scratching the surface. Today, we are breaking down how to calculate Scope 3 emissions step by step. From purchase goods and transportation to waste and investments, we have got it all covered. So whether you are a business owner looking to go green, a sustainability officer wanting to take things to the next level, or just curious about what the heck Scope 3 even means, this video is for you. Buckle up and let's dive into the world of Scope 3 emissions. You may have heard of Scope 1 and Scope 2 emissions, but what about Scope 3? Well, they are actually the biggest piece of puzzle. And today, we are not just explaining what Scope 3 is, but showing you exactly how to calculate it, category by category. So stick around if you want to know how your favorite brands and maybe even your own business can go green. All right, so what are Scope 3 emissions? Simply put, they are all the emissions a business is indirectly responsible for, up and down its value chain. That's everything from the raw materials a company buys to the end of life disposal of the product it sells. Unlike Scope 1, which covers direct emissions, and Scope 2, which is all about purchased electricity, Scope 3 emissions take things to another level. So let's talk about Scope 3 in detail. Scope 3 are split into 15 categories. Let's break them down one by one. You will want to take notes on this. Now, category one, which is purchase goods and services. Category one is all about what your company buys to make its products. Think raw materials, office supplies, even cleaning services. To calculate this, you will need to gather data from suppliers, like how much of each material you're buying and how those materials are produced. Now, the calculation method for category 1 is activity data into emission factor for each material types. The activity data for category 1 can be quantity of goods or services purchased. Emission factors is often found in life cycle databases like DEFRA or EcoInvent. Now, the example is, if a company buys 1000 kgs of steel, the emission factor might be 2.5 kgs carbon dioxide equivalent steel. So the answer is 2500 kilograms of carbon dioxide equivalent is the outcome in category 1. Now category 2 is about capital goods. This includes things like machinery, vehicles and buildings. Emission from these purchases can be calculated using the life cycle assessment method, which takes into account how these items are produced and shipped to you. Now, don't forget to track depreciation. These assets may stay in with you for years. Now, the calculation method to calculate category 2 is activity data into emission factor for capital goods over their lifetime. Now, activity data will be purchase data on capital items like buildings or machineries. The emission factors usually includes the life cycle emissions for the production of capital goods. Now, here's an example. For a new building, estimate the total emissions from its materials and construction process. Now, category 3 is fuel and energy related activities which are not included in scope 1 or scope 2. Category 3 is a bit tricky. It covers the extraction, production and transportation of fuels and electricity you use, but only the emission not already counted in scope 1 and scope 2. 
Now to calculate this by gathering data on your fuel sources and apply emission factors for upstream production and distribution. The calculation method to calculate this category is activity data into emission factor for each fuel or energy type. The activity data can be amount of fuel or electricity consumed. The emission factors includes emissions from the extraction, production and distribution stages. Let's go through an example. For electricity, consider emissions from upstream processes like coal mining or natural gas extraction. Now let's look at category 4. Upstream transportation and distribution is category 4. Now it looks at how your products are shipped to you. If you buy materials from suppliers who ship by truck, rail or even plane, you need to track those emissions. Ask your suppliers about the transport modes they use and calculate the emission based on the distance and weight shipped. Now the calculation method for this category is activity data and emission factor based on transport mode and distance. Now the activity data can be weight of goods transported, transport distance and transportation mode. For emission factors can be mode specific example, trucking, rail etc. Now let's look at the example. Emission for 100 tons of transported 500 km of truck can be measured using truck emission factor. Category 5 is waste generated in operations. So category 5 we can say is all about waste. This includes everything from the manufacturing scraps to the office trash. Calculate this by estimating the waste types and amounts. Then applying emission factors based on disposal methods like landfill, recycling or incineration. The calculation method to calculate this category is waste volume into emission factor for each waste type and disposal method. Now the activity data is the volume of weight of waste generated. Your emission factors varies for landfills, recycling and incineration. Now here's an example. If a facility produces 10 tons of landfill waste, apply the landfill emission factor for this category. Now there's category 6 of business travel. This one is easy to understand. Category 6 covers business flights, train rides and even car rentals. To calculate this, track your employees' travel activities and use specific emission factors for each travel type. Now the calculation method is simple. It's distance travelled into emission factor based on mode of travel. The activity data here can be distance and mode of travel, which is air, car and train. Emission factors can be based on the type of travel, which is short haul flights, cars, etc. Now here's an example. A flight emission factor for 1000 km might be 0.2 kg carbon dioxide equivalent per kilometer per passenger. Category 7 is for employee commuting. Employee commuting can add up quickly, especially for larger companies. Survey employees on their commuting habits like distance and mode of transport and then calculate emissions accordingly. Now the calculation method for this category is again distance travelled into emission factors for commuting modes. Now the activity data can be employee commute patterns which is distance mode, distance and mode. Now the emission factors are mode specific. For example, calculate based on survey data or estimate average commuting distance. Now there's category 8, which is upstream leased assets. These are emissions from assets you're leasing that are not included in your scope 1 and scope 2, like a rented warehouse. Now the calculation method is leased asset energy use multiplied by the emission factor. Now here the activity data is energy consumed by leased assets and the emission factors are based on energy source used, example electricity or natural gas. 
Now let's look at an example. Calculate emissions for a rented office based on the energy use of the space. Now let's look at downstream scope 3 emissions. Now the first in downstream scope 3 emissions is category 9, which is downstream transportation and distribution. Once your product leaves your hands, how is it transported to the customer? Find out from your logistics partner and apply distance-based emission factors. Now the calculation method for to measure category 9 is distance into weight into emission factor based on transport mode. Now here the activity data will be quantity of goods, transportation mode and distance to consumer. Now again the emission factors here are also mode specific. Now let's go through an example. Calculate emissions for product shipments to end users, factoring in travel distance and mode. Now let's look at category 10, processing of solid products. If your product goes to another manufacturer for further processing, you will need to estimate the emissions generated from that stage too. This can be tricky, but partnerships with downstream processors can help you get accurate data. The calculation method for this category is quantity of goods into emission factor for each processing step. The activity data here is quantity of goods requiring further processing. The emission factors are based on typical processing methods for the product type. Here's an example for this category. For sold products that need assembly or manufacturing after purchase, calculate emissions for each step. Now let's look at category 11, which is use of sold products. Category 11 covers the emission generated when customers use your product. For example, if you sell washing machines, you will estimate the energy usage and emissions over its lifetime. Now the calculation method for this category is units sold into estimate emissions per use. The activity data for this can be quantity of products sold, estimated lifetime and usage patterns. Emission factors are based on energy consumption or other relevant metrics per unit of product. Here's an example. A refrigerator's electricity usage over its lifetime is multiplied by emission factors of energy. Now let's look at category 12, which is end of life treatment of sold products. Where does your product end up after use? Calculate emissions from landfills, recycling, or even if it is incinerated. It's important to understand the entire life cycle. The calculation method is quantity disposed into emission factor of disposal method, where the activity data can be quantity of product at end of life and disposal methods. Emission factors can, will depend on disposal methods like recycling, landfill or incineration. Now here's an example. Calculate the emissions from a plastic bottle based on whether it is landfilled or recycled. Let's look at category 3, which is downstream leased assets. This is similar to category 8, but for assets you lease out. If you're renting out equipment or building, you're responsible for tracking their emissions too. The calculation method here is energy use of leased assets into emission factor. The activity data here is leased asset energy consumption. Your emission factors are based on the type of energy used. For example, if leasing out office space, estimate the energy used by the tenants and apply emission factor. Category 14, Franchising. If you own franchises, you will need to include emissions from those locations like Scope 1 and Scope 2 data for each franchisee. The calculation method here is emission per franchisee multiplied by number of franchisees. The activity data will be franchisee level data for scope 1 and scope 2 emissions. The emission factors will be based on franchises operation and energy use. For example, if you own a fast food chain, 
use average energy and waste data for each franchisee location. Let's look at now category 15, which is investments. And finally, investment, if you hold stake in other companies, you're also responsible for share of their emissions, which can get complex. The calculation method is invest the emissions into investment percentage. The activity data here is emission data from investments, usually a share of the investee's total emissions. The emission factors can be based on the sector or activities in which the investee is engaged. For example, if investing in a steel company, apply emission factors relative to your shareholding in that company. These calculation metrics require accurate data collection and understanding of each category's relevant factor. Most companies use third-party tools and databases like CDP. EcoInvent or Gabi to help gather information on emission factors and refine the calculations. Integrating these steps into your emissions inventory management can provide a comprehensive understanding of your business carbon footprint. And there you have it. That's everything you need to know to start calculating your scope 3 emissions, category by category. From the raw materials you buy to how your products are all used and thrown away, Scope 3 emissions give you the full picture of your environmental impact. I know it sounds a lot to take in. Scope 3 can feel overwhelming at first. But hey, knowledge is power. The more we understand where our emissions come from, the better we can reduce them. And that's the first step towards building a sustainable future for all of us. Now I want to hear from you. What part of Scope 3 surprised you the most? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you've learned something new today, hit that like button and make sure you subscribe for more sustainability insights every week. Thanks for watching. And remember, we can make a difference. One emission at a time. Stay green. Stay informed and I'll catch you in the next video. Till then, bye-bye.